said a lot about the man of God prophet TB Joshua and we are still on it whatever message you are hearing now is a continuity of whatever message I've uploaded before and I would like you to be very diligent while listening to this very message you know I told you that I was going to review the end of synagogue the things that will happen to synagogue in the later days and then the days are around the corner but before I reveal these things, I must first of all teach you where the man of God missed it so you understand why these things will come. Because if I should just come and give you prophecies concerning the end of synagogue, it will be very strange to you. So the first thing I need to do is to reveal the fault and culprit, the areas he missed it, so you understand what has opened the gate, the door, for these things that are to happen to synagogue. Now, let's read the book of tb joshua's failure the book of tb joshua's failure chapter 1 verse 1 tb joshua did not teach his members that their head is god's altar tb joshua did not teach his members that their head is god's altar act of apostle chapter 2 verse 3 the bible said as they were gathered in one accord the spirit of god came and sat upon them as a clothing tongue on fire where they did sit their head their head because the head of a man is an altar the bible said that your body is the temple of god in every temple there's an altar in every temple there is what an altar so you must first of all discover where your altar is in your body you must first of all discover where your altar is in god's temple which is your body in some churches their altar is at the center of the church why uh, some churches their altar is at the extreme the end of the church so in your body you must discover the location where your altar is people keep singing holy fire fall upon my altar where have you discovered the altar 
Have you this now? Listen to me. People keep talking about their heart. Child of God, your heart is not the altar. Your heart is God's secret place. Your heart is God's inner chamber, the inner court of God, the secret place of God. So that is where God hides himself. But when God wants to pour out, when God wants to manifest himself, he sits upon your head. The Bible said, and Samson was on his way to the Philistine to marry the woman which he desired. And a lion came to confront him on the way. And the Spirit of God came upon him mightily. And he rented the lion as a kid. Child of God, the Spirit that comes upon a man sits upon his head. That is why when you see yourself, you begin to pray. At a point, you begin to charge. You begin to charge. And it looks as if a cloud has wrapped you. Child of God, something has sat upon your head. That is why you start behaving abnormal in the place of koinonia. In the place of acute prayer. When you begin to pray and you journey be beyond the earth realm, you journey beyond the canal, and you enter into a realm whereby you become abnormal in the place of prayer. Something has rested upon your head, and that thing that rested up, upon your head is what has charged you, and you became too vigorous, energetic, and boisterous while praying. So your head is an altar, and that head must be consecrated, because any altar that is not consecrated will be polluted. Any altar that is not consecrated is profaned. Any altar that is not consecrated is abominable. Any altar that is not consecrated is defied, and that altar will like power. And when God is not sitting on your altar, then the devil will sit on your altar. So you must understand that a lot of members there who the devil is sitting on their altar on their head, and that is why you won't stop complaining of headache because something has tempered with your altar. You open the gate of hell to come and rest on your altar. That is why God told Santi, Don't shave your head. Because his head was his altar, was the place of power. The day the hair was shaven by Delilah, the power left. When the altar is defied, then the spirit of God will disappear. You must understand that your head is an altar. It is time that you sh should become very conscious on your head, on how you deal with your head. A lot of people are so careless about their head. They think their head is their head, but they don't understand that their head is God. Any place God stays is God. So if God would rest on your head, then your head is God. I'm going to prove this to you. God taught Samson, don't shave your hair because it's an altar. Naturally, men were shaving their hair. It's a shame for men to carry long hair. But God wanted to use Samson as an allegory. God wanted to use Samson as a symbolic representation of what the head represents in the spirit realm. That is why he taught Samson, don't shave your head. So that mortals will understand the spiritual indication that the head is an altar. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So your head is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. So why did they pass this message? It's a dual dimensional message. What does it pass it to us? It means your head is a place that Christ sits upon. And because he sits upon your head, he's your head. And at the same time, he's your leader. The head is the chief part of the body. So the chief part of the body is the part that is leading, is the priority of the body. That's what the Bible says, when your eyes is full of darkness, then the whole body world will be in darkness. Why? Because the eyes is part of the head. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So your head is an altar. Verse 4, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You cannot cover your head. You can't cover Christ. Allow Christ to be seen in your life. Don't defy your head. Verse 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaving. They are telling you, you as a woman, when you prophesy, when you pray, and your head is not covered, you are dishonoring your head. 
many women has disconsecrated, has abused, desecrated, defied their head because they were not taught. A pastor's wife prophesying on the altar without her head covered. Members praying, prayer warrior, leading prayer without her head covered. Usher, ushering people without her head covered. Choir is that choir mistress leading, singing without her head covered is an error. Such worship does not ascend to God. Such service does not ascend to God. Such prayer does not go up. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a bad order. Until you consecrate your head, whatever that comes from your mouth will not go up as a sweet incense. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaving, let her be covered. Child of God, if you are a woman and you don't cover your head when you pray, you have buried your head. You have shamed your head. Because in Africa, women shave their head when their husband dies. They shave off their head when their husband dies. It means you have, you have inaugurated your head into a burial ground. It means you have buried the glory of your head. It means your husband has died. In other words, the spirit of God in you has been taken away. The spirit of God upon your head, your glory upon your head has been taken. That is why David, David understood this mystery. That's why he said in the book of Psalms, my glory and the lifter up of my head because he knows the glory and the head goes together your glory and the lifter up of your head when your glory is taken away from your head then your head will be bowed to shame but when the glory comes then your head will be lifted so you must understand that your head is an altar any man of god that didn't teach you this has killed you they know this thing they kept it but they don't teach their members that is why you see them manifesting power and they teach power and yet their members don't manifest power because they kept the consecration of the head and why their members don't keep it you see them babbing all manner of stupid style stupid style punk afro nonsense head take a look at the man babalola look at his feature the style of his head take a look at the man bensi dahosa the style of his head even the man prophet T.B. Joshua, look at the style. Today, modern pastors with modern hair and modern teaching, raising up modern members. Idols. The Bible said they are forsaking the highway and they all follow the byway. They have left the narrow path and they follow the broad path. He said they are forsaking their old love. He said return back to your old love. Things that were not done in the days of Abalala, now they are being done. Because the, the stupid pastors we have now, they have imitated the Westerners. They have imitated the foreigners. They have copied their stupidity and they have adopted it into our church. Corruption. That's what the Bible called the corruptible. It's a barrier to your head when you cover, well, sorry, when you don't cover your head when you pray as a woman. And as a man, when you cover your head and pray, you put on red cap, Pope, you put on red cap, Bishop. In the place of prayer, and you call it a honorary cap. That's what they used to understand. You are, you are a reverend. Who told you they will reverend you to hell? A man should not cover his head. A woman should cover her head. It's an altar. They said you should shave your hair. Shave your hair if you don't want to cover your head. Shave it. Barb your hair if you don't want to cover. So if it is a shame, then you must understand that it's a shame also. It's an error. It's a barrier. It's a funeral. It's an obituary where you don't cover your hair and pray. 
Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Child of God, the woman created for the woman, sorry, the, the woman created for the man, and the man is created for Christ. And Christ was living for God. He said, I do not do my will, but the will of my father. So he went about doing the will of his father because the father is his head. God is the head of Christ, not just his leader, his head. That is why he said, he that have seen me, have seen my father. Why? Anytime you look at the face of Jesus, you see God. In Colossians, the Bible said, is the image and the, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The image of the invisible God. So anytime you see Jesus, you see the Father because God is the head of Christ. When you look at his face, you see Jesus. Sorry, when you look at Jesus' face, you see God. Verse 10, for this cause ought the women to have power on her head. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Angels are so conscious about these things. But women are not conscious of the angels. Because if you don't do it because of your husband, do it because of the angel. Because the angel will strike your head. Your head is an altar. There are a lot of things happening to the head. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Is a question. Judge among yourselves. They have not taken time to consider these things. The Bible said, consider your ways. They have not considered this thing. They have not judged this thing. That is why this thing is still in the church. It's still rampant in the church. People praying with their head uncovered. Verse 14. Do not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Pastors with long hair now. They, they carry that, that they, they carry dread. They braid their head. You see a man of God braiding his head, perm his hair. And he says it's time. A defied daughter. That altar is rotting. You see that prophesying with long hair, dread. Fake generation of Samson. Verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is giving her for a covering. This is what men of God has used to back their stupidity. They subvert and pervert the word of God to the backing of their desecrated lifestyle. They tell you that your hair is giving you for a covering, so no need for you to cover your hair. You are such a stupid teacher. Now listen to me. When he said that the woman's hair is for her covering, is they were speaking comparatively. Regarding what they have told the men, that the men should what? Carry short hair. They should shave their hair. And the women should carry long hair. For their hair is giving them for a covering. Not in the aspect of consecration now. Not the aspect of prayer. They have settled on that one and they went further to tell you more about the hair. That men should not carry long hair. And they said the women should carry long hair. Why should the women carry long hair? Because it's their glory. Nature should teach you. The Bible says even nature teaches you. When a woman shaves her hair, she appears ugly. It's only a few women that will bath their hair and they will still look beautiful. But they look more beautiful when they carry long hair. Because some women, they have gallop on their head. Gallop. Some have big head. So when they carry long hair, it covers their big head. Their shape will be covered. So that is why he said for her hair, is giving her for a covering. Not in the aspect of prayer. Don't turn the word of God upside down. You must understand the context. He spoke contextually. In the aspect of prayer, he said, cover your head. He told me, don't cover your hair. Then in the aspect of how your hair should look, he told the men, shave your hair. It's a shame if you carry long hair. Then the women carry long hair for your glory. It distinguished them. 
Verse 16. But if any man seems to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So if you are not comfortable with this teaching, God is saying whatever doctrine you adopt, you introduce. We have no such word custom in the churches of God. So any church that adopts this stupidity is no longer the church of God. It has become the church of mammon, the church of Satan. That is why such church we fall. Before Saul started teaching, if you study from verse 2, before where we started in verse 3, he said, Now I praise you, virgin, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you, as he delivered it to you, not as you people changed it. In Africa, many years ago, these things were kept. But when people like Pastor Chris traveled abroad and came back, they changed everything. They copied nonsense from the white men. Today it has become a normal thing. Children are better and they meet the system. They see it as a normal thing. Go back to your old love as the Bible said. Go back! A generation where you see women putting on with on their head. They cover, the Bible said carry long hair. It didn't say put on with on. Carry long hair is not put on with on. Carry long hair is not put on attachment. Look at what you call it, attachment. It means it's not your own. You are adding it. Where is it gotten from? Let me forget the spiritual aspect, the spiritual implications, where these things are made or the demonic. Now, I'm talking now naturally. It's an error. You are passing the last message to God. You are telling God that what he gave to you is not okay. That he would have given you this one. That the one he gave you is bad. You use artificial to cover original. You use shape to cover the glory of God. That is what the Bible said in Psalm. All ye sons of men, how long will you continue to turn my glory into shame? They take delight in listening. What is listening? Lies. Artificial. Things that are not true. Things that are not original. They cleave to these things. And they condemn things that are genuine. Child of God, if you are a woman listening to me, God said, carry your long hair. It's your glory. Not carry a long weaver or a long attachment. It is satanic. You are desecrating the altar. You are polluting the altar. The glory of God cannot carry there. That is why Satan will keep on rubbishing you people. That is why your head will be bowed to shame. Your head will not be lifted because the glory on the altar has departed. Your life is a mess today. Your life has turned out to become an ink cupboard. The glory has departed from Israel because the altar of your head is defined. Is defined. Is defined. Pastor's wife, big with on their head, members imitating them, and they climb the altar of God to teach with their Jezebelic hair. Daughters of Jezebel everywhere. All these things he saw them, he didn't speak. Courage was not there. He lacked courage. He couldn't say these things because he wanted them to be comfortable. He didn't want the, the law or the word to be burdensome to them. That is why the Bible said the commandment of God is not burdensome. Why? Because some men saw it as a burden. So Paul was telling them it's not burdensome. If you get to understand why this law are given, you will know that they are for your good. When God told Adam and Eve, don't eat the fruit that is in the midst of the garden, they saw it as a burden. But when they ate the fruit, they understood why God told them not to eat. Anytime God asks you not to eat, not to do, not to practice a particular thing, he is giving you that law for your good, not for a burden, child of God. That is why many of you will be possessed with innumerable demons that came from your withal, that came from your attachment, that came from the, 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 the priming of your hair. Evil relaxers that they used to relax your hair and they relax your glory, relax the spirit of God in you, relax everything and worms start moving in your head spiritually and you can't think where, well. you start behaving haywire. That is why many women will talk to their husband anyhow because there is a mammal on their head that keeps indicating any time there is a clash in the house and when they begin to bash on their husband, the men become surprised and they begin to wonder how come this woman is talking to me like this as if she's the man. She's the man because there is a giant living in her through the weaver she's putting on her head. There is a giant living in her through the attachment on her head. There is a giant living in her through the relaxer. A woman of God was taught by me these things and then she started keeping them. All of a sudden she got tired of keeping them and she went back to them. 
and from that time she started having head problem head problem head problem and she was in the dream and the lord opened her eyes she saw that there was lies on her head and when she inquired how come the lies they told her that the things that you used on your head you desecrated the head that was already sanctified that became a holy altar for god and because of that your punishment came and when she came to me she said i should pray for her and she never told me what she did i prayed for her the sickness increased she came back and started shouting the sickness has increased though has increased though i will confess so i said what happened she told me everything she did i said god have mercy on her when i laid hand on her she was on the ground when she stood up sickness disappeared and she said i will never put this relaxer on my head again i will never that day she asked someone to get her scissors so that she can cut the hair and start afresh carrying her virgin hair I said, I wait, now it's already late tomorrow. He said, No, I won't wait till tomorrow. I won't wait till tomorrow. Even though the sickness has left, the lies are still eating me. I need to buy. It was when she shaved the hair that the lies stopped eating her. Some of you may say, I am okay. Nothing is happening to me. The one that God loves, he chastises and rebukes. That's why God told Israel in Amos 3, verse 1 Among all the families of the earth, he only have I known. Therefore, we punish you because of your iniquity. So when God begins to punish you personally, it is because he loves you. Those of you who is not giving such attack now, you will end up in hell. Your punishment is waiting for you in hell. In hell. One of my members who heard this kind, these messages, I taught them back and front. They knew it was true. Many of them stopped carrying with one on their head. And one went back to it feast with her and when she was done facing that night there was no peace a demon appeared to her in a dream and began to quarrel her give me my property give me my property and she was so afraid he said what is your property that i'm holding which one is your property he said the weaver on your head is my property give it to me give it to me now yes i will deal with you i will kill you i will deal with you and she was so afraid until she woke up from the dream the demon had no peace the demon was tormented because she was connected to the covenant that is keeping the church. So the ministry that she's under does not permit such. So the holy fire in that ministry was fighting the spirit that was in her, that was connected to her through what she was wearing. So the demon now, because she was less restless, the demon started threatening her to bring back her property as she will kill her. When it was daybreak, she called her children and said, Please remove this thing from her head. And her elder sister said, Did you just fill this with phone yesterday? How come you are removing it today? He told the elder sister, she told the elder sister what she saw. He said, I can no longer put on this one. And when she saw me, she told me I smiled. I said, When we talk, you think we don't know what we are saying. A woman entered a particular church, and when she entered that church, the usher came and removed the weaver from their head because in their in, in, in the doctrine of the church does not permit weaver so as soon as the the woman entered the church and said that the usher removed the weaver without the woman's consent because it was against their principle so when the the, the thing was removed the demon that was in the woman slapped the usher and the usher was on the ground dying and the demon left the woman's body and entered another woman's body and spoke aloud and said if not because of this pastor I would have killed you. How dare you remove the problem that I put on her head? How dare you remove the problem that I put on her head? Her head. When the woman put on that weaver, she thought it was a fa fashion, a fancy, not knowing that she was carrying a problem. You are carrying an altar of problem on your head. And you go about telling God to, to heal you. That is why after they finish praying for you and the demon leaves your body. After three days, the demon comes back because what brought the demon is still there. You can't hold what belongs to Caesar and Caesar won't look, won't look for you. You can't hold what belongs to Caesar and Caesar not look for you. He never taught them to cover their hair. He never taught them not to put on weaver. He left them like this and they were so polluted, desecrated, and God wasn't happy with the job because they were not presentable. The Bible said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you brethren by the message of God that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. It's an unreasonable service when your body is not holy. There are things that are done in that place. 
that appears a vomit before God. Apostle Paul said, I pray that God sanctify you holy. Completely, complete sanctification. I pray that he preserve your spirit, soul, and body blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the reasons or one of the things, the factor that is preventing the coming of the Savior is because these people are not yet what? Preserved completely. They are not yet sanctified completely. So if he should come, who will he go with? Members who are desecrated, members who are defied, the whole earth will be left in damnation. So he's still tarrying because souls are not yet prepared. And that is why God is counting on the youth to prepare the souls. I pray that your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless. So it is not only the spirit that should be sanctified, it is not only the soul that should be what preserved. Your body needs consecration, and one of the part of the body that demand absolute consecration is the head, your altar, the altar of God, the altar of God. When you fail to consecrate your head and prepare an altar on your head for God, then your head will become an altar of darkness. That is why some people, when you look at them spiritually, you see them carrying a big bowl on their head. Some are carrying house on their head. Some are carrying demon. Cockroach, all manner of nonsense on their head. Load! You see yourself in the dream, you are carrying load, and physically your life is full of body. The reason why you are carrying this body and this load, it is because your hair is not an altar for God. So it has become an altar for Satan. Some are carrying serpent on their head. There are people that are using their head to walk, and their leg is up. People like that, if God should open your eyes, you go to the marketplace, you see diversities of people. Some are not human, but I'm talking about human now. There are human, human, who the devil has given something on in the realm of the spirit. There is a pot on their head, and the pot is pouring a smoke, black smoke on their head. There are people like that because their head is not a altar. Until you consecrate your head. Do you know one time, long time ago? Going to 13 years back, the Lord appeared to me. And you must know anything that makes the Lord to come to your room, your house, is a serious matter. You must hold that matter serious. He appeared in my room and he looked at me. I bowed myself before him. And all chances were given to me. I said, Master, you said that men should shave their hair. That have I done. He said, Yes. I said, you said the men should not cover their hair whenever they are praying or prophesying. That have I kept. He said, yes. And when I was done speaking, he said, but there is something on your head. Child of God, what was on my head? There was a, 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 a cream that I used to rub my head. And I never knew the cream was mixed with dye. A black cream. I don't know what it is so mixed or so fine. The one that is black. I used it to rub my head then. And the Lord came because of that. It wasn't an angel that came, it was him that came because it's his head and he is the head. And when I woke up from that revelation, I began to ask, I said, Lord, what is on my head? And the spirit ministered to me, the creep, the creep, the creep. From that day, I stopped using the creep. The next time I saw myself taking my bath, in other words, I was being washed, purified from that state. From that time, I never touched my head with anything of such. But there are people now, even pastors, using it, and no, nothing is talking to them, and they feel very comfortable. I told it to one of my pastor friends, and he said, but I've never seen something like that. I said, eh, because God is not moved to tell you directly, so he has revealed it to me to tell you. So that is why I'm telling you now. So God must not appear to everyone. So a message passed to one is a message passed to all. Some of you, he's not talking to you. And you must understand that we have degrees in the spirit, different degree. There's a level of grace that will be committed to a man. And that grace will demand a level of consecration. So when the man goes against the consecration, then there will be an attack. I was attacked seriously that night before Christ appeared to deliver me and I bowed. So after I bowed, I started saying those things. I, I, it was put in my mouth to say. So my point is that there are things you must be careful about concerning your head. Your head is God's altar. It's God's altar. 
men carry fire on their head. There was a time I was preaching in the church, and one member who is in, into the prophetic, he was looking at me, aghast, so surprised. And when the service was over, he came to me, he said, sir, there is something I saw in your head while you were teaching. I said, what? He said, I saw stars, innumerable stars on your head. They were so bright as if it was night and it was broad daylight. He said, and the spirit said, I have made him a star. He said, anywhere he goes to, this star follows him, even in the bathroom, anywhere. Why? Because the head is an altar. The head is an altar. Any head that is consecrated, we carry fire, we carry star, we carry glory. But many of you, you have failed to understand these things. That's why you can see a pastor, Bambi stupid star, Bambi punk, Afro. The Bible said in the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 4 to 5, But he shall not defy himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. A chief man is a pastor. A chief man is a shepherd. A chief man is the president of the church who is representing Christ. Why is he giving this law to the priest, to the head? Because they are the mirror. They are the gospel that the people listen to. They are the gospel that the people look at. Whenever the people look at you, they see God. You are their mirror. So they behold themselves through you and they begin to correct their errors. So when pastors begin to bab Afro and bab punk and bab all manner of nonsense, then their members begin to imitate it because what they see the head doing is what they will do. In verse 5, they shall not make badness upon their head. Badness, badness. Are you Elisha? Are you a horse that you should make badness on your head? Something that did not come naturally. You were not born with it. All of a sudden, you use scraper to shave and create badness because you want to look like a horse or look like Elisha. You are such a stupid, unreasonable minister. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their bed. Shave off. He didn't say you should not reduce the corner of your bed. He didn't say you should not reduce your BS. He said, don't shave it off. Don't remove it completely because nature should teach you that God planted that in there for a purpose. He used that beard to, to design you. But the devil gave you a bad understanding and you removed everything completely. Are you telling God that what he did is not a, a, a perfect work? Are you trying to teach God his job? Those of you who have feed in your compound, what do you do? You reduce it. You reduce it. You don't remove everything totally. Else you will see the nakedness of the ground. So God planted that seed to cover the shape. So when God gives you beers, he didn't give you to remove it completely. Neither shall they shave off, off the corner of their bed, nor make any cutting in their flesh. Pastors on tattoo, white men pastors, with tattoo on their hands. And African pastors are imitating them. Members with tattoo. Verses, they shall be holy unto their God and not profane. The name of their God for the offering of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore they shall be holy. What is the bread of their God if not the doctrine? If not the gospel? You as a preacher who is offering the bread of God, the word of God, you are so profane, so abominable, so defied. Jesus said, be careful of the living of the Pharisees, of their bread. And they were wondering, what, which, which bread? He said, the doctrine, the doctrine, their message. Be careful of what you hear and what you listen to. That is why they can come here and teach you nonsense and tell you that the hair of a woman is given her for a covering. So now she can't cover her hair. She's free to pray without covering. They have buried all of you. And you say, oh, why am I reading the Old Testament? The Old Testament is different from the New Testament. You, you are sick of mental passing. Don't you ever differentiate the old and from new. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn the law, but I came to fulfill it. The reason why Jesus came to fulfill the law is because men handled the law in weakness. They, they handled the, the law deceitfully. They perverted the law. They abused the law. They used the law in wickedness. So he came to bring out the truth of the law. That's why the Bible said the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. So the fulfillment of the law is to bring out the truth of the law. That's why Jesus said that no judge of the law will be what? Left unkept until the end he said any man that failed to teach men the law will be the least in the kingdom but he that teaches men the law shall be the greatest in the kingdom so if you want to be regarded as the greatest you must teach them the law so as many of you who fail to teach the law you are the least in the kingdom that is why when you rate men by their assets in this earth realm, in the heavenly realm they rate them to be nothing 
many vanities of pastors. Consecrate your head and let the glory of God come down. This is the voice of the heaven, son of David. Wisdom is crying in the streets of YouTube.